extra pulmonary. What are the extra pulmonary sites? Commonest extra pulmonary sites are lymph node, GI tract, CNS. These are the other most uh, common extra pulmonary sites for involvement. It can involve, TB can involve any part of the body. TB can involve any part of the body. So anything, bone, spinal cord, spinal cord means vertebral canal that can be involved in extra pulmonary tuberculosis. These are the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. You must remember this name. This is asked, can be asked as a short note, can be asked in the oral. Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex compressed of mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium bovis, mycobacterium africanum, mycobacterium capri, mycobacterium mycoti, and mycobacterium caneti and mycobacterium pdpd. So these are now. Laboratory diagnosis of tuberculosis. You have already done your practical class sputum for geren stain or acid first stain. But in recent era, with the advent of molecular test, we are going from always going for upfront CVNAT or molecular test to diagnose the tuberculosis. What is the advantage of molecular test? One is you can diagnose TB because in sputum. It is 10 to the power 4 bacilli per ml is required to get it positive. So sensitivity is lower than the molecular test. And second part is we can know the defamation resistance at the same time. So let's start with laboratory diagnosis. So what are the main principles of diagnosis of TB? One is try to establish the microbiological confirmation in all cases. TB has been in past. Sometimes we use the empirical antitubercular drug, but with advent of diagnostic, so molecular tests are coming up. So we are not trying to give empirical anti-TB treatment without any microbiological confirmation. The first principle is microbiological confirmation of all cases. Use rapid molecular diagnostic upfront, wherever possible for diagnosis of TB. And early identification of resistant to treating drugs and focus more on quality sample collection and timely transportation. So, sample must be proper, optimum sample, quality sample collection and timely transport. So, these are the three main features that is given in National Tuberculosis Eradication Program for diagnosis of tuberculosis. Now, when you can say which patient you will prescribe the test for T. What are the clinical features? Patient will come to you. So, patient the main patient with cough for more than two weeks. With or without fever, with or without hemoptysis. So main features, any patient coming to you with cough for more than two weeks, tuberculosis should be excluded. So person with cough for more than two weeks is a presumptive pulmonary tuberculosis patient. They are to refer to designated microscopy center for sputum examination and patient belonging to key population. When you suspect extra pulmonary tuberculosis, HIV or pediatric age group, go rightly directly to CVNAT. So this is the second principle. When it is, uh, you get a patient with cough for more than two weeks, you exclude tuberculosis. Now this is a new case definition. Previously it was called patient TB suspect. That term has been changed. What is the new term? Presumptive TB. So what is presumptive TB? Who presents with symptoms, signs, suggestive of TB? TB has been known as TB suspect. What is that? Cough for more than two weeks. That is presumptive tuberculosis. Next, presumptive pulmonary tuberculosis, signs of cough, fever for more than two weeks, significant weight loss, patient living with HIV, having diabetes. These are cancer or immune suppression drug at any moment. They are presumptive pulmonary TB. Presumptive extra pulmonary TB, any person with organ specific sign, limb node swelling, what would be the character of limb node in tuberculosis? The limb node will be in a matted limb node. Matted limb node, more than one limb node attached with each other. When you feel a tubercular limb node, you will never forget in life how the TB limb node palpates. That is a common term is matted limb node. Next is joint pain swelling. 
constitutional symptom like fever, weight loss, and night sweat. So fever, weight loss, night sweat is common to whether it is a pulmonary TB, whether it is extra pulmonary TB. Next, pediatric TB. Because what is pediatric TB? It is children with cough and fever for two weeks. This is the first. Second is significant weight loss. If the child has lost more than 5% weight in the last three months or no weight gain in last three months, you should exclude tuberculosis. Next is contact with infectious TB case. A family member or a neighbor having an active pulmonary tuberculosis. So pediatric TB is first is fever and cough for two weeks, then weight loss more than 5% in three months or any without any weight gain. That is a presumptive tuberculosis case. That already I have told, upfront rapid molecular diagnostic test. What rapid molecular diagnostic test? It, it will be asked everywhere, what is the molecular diagnostic test? That is CBNAT, cartilage-based nucleic acid amplification test. Advantage, first is turnaround time is only two hours. You can get the result only two hours. You also get to know the reformation resistance also, so that you can modify the treatment. So this is the diagnostic algorithm. Everything, this is in single chart. What you should do, whenever any presumptive TB case, sputum smear examination and chest X-ray to be asked. If it is near positive and chest X-ray suggestive of tuberculosis, then it is, next is near positive, but chest X-ray not suggestive of tuberculosis. Smear negative, but chest X-ray suggestive of tuberculosis. So these are the cases where you need to send to next level. This near negative, but it is chest x ray suggestive of tuberculosis. What is the chest x ray that is suggestive last day I told? What chest x ray, where, which part of the lesion will occur in which part in tuberculosis? In adult tuberculosis, not the prime in children. What is the common x ray finding? Common x ray finding is the involvement of the upper lobe. Involvement of the upper lobe that is common in tuberculosis, so any shadow in the upper lobe or any cavitary lesion that is suggestive of tuberculosis, that is suggestive of chest X-ray. Next is near negative, chest X-ray not suggestive, then clinical suspicion of high. Clinical suspicion high, where in pediatric cases, weight loss, where patient having fever, which is not subsiding in spite of other treatment for more than two weeks. These are the cases where suggestive. Then we go for CBNAP. PMDT criteria. What is PMDT criteria? Programmatic management of drug resistant TB. PMDT. Programmatic management of drug resistant TB. And those cases should go to, even if the, it is near positive, you send it for CBNAT. Don't start treatment in the last NTEP, which is started from 2020. Before starting treatment, always do a sensitivity test. So if it is near positive, previously when it is near positive, we start treatment, but now we go for CBNAT even if it is near positive, so that we know the reformation resistance. This is the same algorithm for the diagnosis. Programmatic management of drug resistant tuberculosis in India have been released in March 2021 in World TB Day. Programmatic management of drug resistant tuberculosis. The new guideline have considered. Emerging diagnostic pain, true NAT or gene expert. Both are this true NAT and gene expert, both are CV NAT. These are the two commercial names. Either it is a true NAT or gene expert. So don't first utter this name, true NAT or gene expert. You utter CV NAT. Then if it comes the commercial name, this commercial name are either true NAT or gene expert, which are available. And after that, Next generation sequencing and whole genome sequencing is a new method for diagnosing which is costly and not available in most of the center. Now why we are so important to know the resistance? Because the MDR TB is increasing in our population. Multidrug resistant TB is on a rise. Microbiological confirmation. A presumptive TB case, you have asked for a sputum sample, proper sputum sample, then you do a gilnensel stain or a fluorescent stain. Which fluorescent stain is usually used? So positive for acid first bacilli, 
or positive for microbiological confirmation. So when you are asked what is, how you confirm, so these are the three ways. One is positive for acid first bacilli either by gene limson stain or fluorescent stain. Next positive for mycobacterium tuberculosis on culture and positive or TB through rapid diagnostic molecular test. Now how long it will take to grow in a solid culture media? Now clinically diagnosing TB, which I was mentioning empirical anti-tubercular treatment should be limited to very few patients where in spite of high suspicion microbiological confirmation could not be established. Entire diagnostic algorithm puts almost utmost effort to diagnose tuberculosis. Now here is third point. Demonstrating hypersensitivity to purified protein derivatives. What is the test? It is called Mantu test. How much Mantu test? What is diagnosed? Mantu test, do we diagnose tuberculosis? What is the implication of mycobacterium uh, Mantu test? Usually, 5 tuberculin unit PPD protein purified derivative is used. What if diagnosed, it does not diagnose tuberculosis, it diagnosed exposure to tuberculosis bacilli previously. Exposure to previous tuberculosis bacilli, that is not of diagnostic of TB. Mantu test, what it diagnosed, it tells us whether the patient is already exposed to mycobacterium tuberculosis. How will you read the Mantu test? You have intradermal injection of 5 tuberculin in a PPD. What you will look after 48 hours? It is read after 48 hours. What will you read in one to test? What it occurs in duration, redness, maybe ulcer. So what it usually what we read? When you call it positive, you in the highest diameter, you measure it with a scale. If it is the in duration, not the redness or other thing, in duration is more than 10 millimeter after 48 to 72 hours then can call it Mantu test is positive. So when Mantu test is positive, it will be in duration you should measure after for at least 48 hours. It can be measured between 48 to 72 hours, but in duration should be more than 40, uh, 10 millimeters. What is the new test? What is coming up in uh, PP, uh, Mantu test? Uh, another test is coming, is being done nowadays. It is interferon gamma release assay. What it diagnose? It specifically diagnose one thing, exposure to TB or patient having latent tuberculosis. So interferon gamma release assay is more specific than Mantu test, but it is costly. As we are still in a developing country, so we cannot afford to give IGRA in all patients, but USA, Mantu test is not done. Only IGRA interferon gamma release assay is done. That is more specific to diagnose the exposure to tuberculosis. What is quality sample? How many sample will you collect? Latest NTP guidelines gives two samples. Spot when the patient visits you first time and ask him to come next morning. So spot sample and the next morning sample. This is the two sample you have to give. Any request form from Jaden stain or acid first stain should accompany two samples. So what are the two samples? Recently discharged material from the bronchial tree with minimum amount of oral and nasopharyngeal material. Presence of mucoid and mucoporinian material, what would be the optimum volume? 2 to 5 ml. Sputum should be collected in a white mouth container. Should you ask him to gargle with antibiotic or oh, antibiotic gargle? You should ask only to rinse the mouth with plain water. Don't use like chlorhexidine gargle or betadine gargle before giving sputum. So just ask him to rinse the mouth with water and then ask him to cough out the mucopurulan sputum, not don't give just the saliva. So the specimen is collected in a sterile container, wide mouth sterile container, after the rinsing the oral cavity with clean water only. The specimen should be packaged and transported to the laboratory as soon as possible. There is no transport media. There is no transport media for sending the sputum, but should be packaged and transported to the laboratory as 
soon as possible. Two samples I have already told. What are the other samples for pulmonary tuberculosis other than sputum? Children who cannot cough, you can give some gastric lavage. Laryngeal aspirate or bronchial washing, gastric lavage in small children less than two years who cannot cough. So gastric lavage can be given because they usually aspirate the sputum. Next is what is done with the sputum? Decontamination and concentration method. When you receive the sputum in your laboratory, what is the first thing to do? You can do directly go for dead end scan or otherwise do and this time you should remember decontamination and concentration method because this sputum also contains other bacteria other than tuberculosis. So if we want to get the tuberculosis in culture or in sputum A, B, more simply then we have to do the decontamination and concentration method. What is the most common decontamination and concentration method used? These are the few methods. Petrox method. Petrox method, what is the uh, chemical used in Petrox methods for decontamination? It is 4% NaOH. After 4% NaOH, it is basic, so you have to neutralize with hydrochloric acid. 8% HCl. So if you make use Petrox method, you have to use the 4% NOH and neutralize by HCl. But what is the commonest method is used? NAL combined with 2% NOH, N-acetyl system. What is the advantage of N-acetyl system? Sometimes you can see some, in some cup syrup, you can get this N-acetyl system that liquefies the sputum. So, if the acid first bacilli is entangled within the mucoid part of the sputum, that can be liquefied by using NALC in acetyl system along with 2% NOH. So, this is the concentration and decontamination method. What are the staining method? One is Gill Nelson staining method. We have already done in practical 25% or 20% H2SO4 is used. In NTP, it is written 25% H2SO4. If you tell 20%, it is not any harm. So, 25% H2SO4, that is the decolorizing metal, it is a material that is used. What are the other methods for staining the sputum? Kinaon modification. What is the kinaon modification? In Jaden stain, what you need to do? You have to heat the carbol fustian so that it penetrates the mycolic acid. Without heating, it won't penetrate the mycolic acid. What is the content of carbol fustian? Basic fustian plus carbol. Carbol means phenol. So, what is the concentration of phenol in carbol fustian? It is usually 5%. In quinoa method, we don't heat. It is not always used for sputum, it is used for acid first staining of other material also. That is why quinoa has developed. Heating is not required. So, what is done? So that it can penetrate the mycolic acid. The concentration of phenol has been increased from 5% to 8%. So that is the cold acid first stain, quinoa method, where the concentration of phenol is increased from 5% to 8%. But the focusing is with 100x. Now, oramine, rhodamine, fluorescent stain. In district tuberculosis center, which stain is commonly used? Fluorescent stain. Now, what is the advantage? What is either it can be oramine rhodamine, which I have written in this slide, or it can be oramine O. Oramine O or oramine rhodamine, that is stain. What is the advantage of fluorescent staining? Anybody? How will you? What is the advantage? Why it is? Utilized in this, what is the disadvantage? You need a fluorescent microscope. Fluorescent microscope is costlier than simple microscope, but still we use the fluorescent staining because if we look in the fluorescent staining at 40x, so 40x wider area can be scanned in a single. That is the advantage. The whole side can be scanned very quickly. So 40x, the magnification used for looking in the oramine O or any fluorescent staining is. 40x and bacilli will appear as by I show how it looks. Now this is again the grading. 
more than 10 per field is 3 plus. So if you get a clump of bacilli, it is 10, 3 plus. Whenever you see a clump of bacilli in a field or in other field, that is 3 plus. Then 1 to 10 per field is 2 plus. 10 to 19 per 100 field, means 1 bacilli per field, that is 1 plus. And 1 to 9 bacilli per 100 field is scanty. So, no A, B in 100. Why I have written 100? I should not only have written no A, B. So, you have to scan at least 100 fields before calling it negative. You have to scan the whole slide for 100 fields before calling it negative. So, this is the grading for NTEP. This is the culture tube. Gold, still gold standard for diagnosis of tuberculosis is culture. What is the media used? This is Lowenstein Jensen media and the colony usually appear after 2 weeks, it takes 4 to 8 weeks to culture to grow. Usually in other bacteria, 24 hours incubation is enough, but it takes 2 to 8 weeks. Why? Last class I discussed about generation time. Generation time of E. coli is 20 minutes. It is 20 hours for tuberculosis and mycobacterium leprae. It is 20 days. So, mycobacterium lepti usually cannot be cultured in a dose media because the generation time is high. These are few liquid media. What is the advantage of liquid media? It grows quickly in 20 days or 2 weeks or 3 weeks and it is used for drug sensitivity testing. The liquid media mostly used for drug sensitivity testing. So, name few liquid media, Dubose media, Middlebrook media, Proscar box media, Sula's media and Sotis media. It is sometimes asked in the exam or oral, what are the liquid media used in mycobacterium tuberculosis. Name newer methods, automated culture method, backed or backed alert, colonimetry based and backtech MGIT, mycobacterium growth indicator tube that use fluorescence, fluorometric technology. These are drug sensitivity tests in a conventional method. This is the only three method that is used for drug sensitivity test in absolute concentration method, resistance ratio method, 1% proportion method. So these are the three conventional drug testing method, not the molecular, conventional drug testing resistance method, absolute concentration method, resistance ratio method, proportional method. Disadvantage, time taken for growth to occur before reading can be taken. So, turnaround time is very high, at least 2 to 3 weeks. These are the few automated systems. PCR and ligase chain reaction, gene expert. TrueNet, transcription mediated amplification, line probe assay. What is the advantage of line probe assay? LPA is very important. Before only uh, one to two years back, gene expert can only diagnose resistance to rifampicin. No other drugs can be tested for resistance in gene expert. Nowadays, they have come up with other cartridges. But line probe assay is the molecular diagnostic test for choice for diagnosing the resistance in second line drugs also. Line probe assay is the method of choice for diagnosing, molecular method of choice for diagnosing the drug sensitivity or drug resistance. So, remember line probe assay. Molecular typing, either based on DNA fingerprinting, IES 6110. Immunodiagnosis, already I have discussed about the PPD tuberculin test and IGRA. In duration 10 millimeter more, that is positive, in duration 5 mm or less, that is negative, 6 to 9 mm is equivalent in Mantu test. So, what is the interpretation? Positive Mantu test. Infection or prior immunization with BCG, test become positive with 4 to 6 weeks after infection, when gradually and disappear after 4 to 5 years. Negative means he had no contact with tuberculosis bacilli previously. What are the false negative tests? False negative Mantu test. Sometimes the, even if the patient is having tuberculosis, false negative Mantu test appears. One is miliary tuberculosis, 
convalescence from some viral disease, lymphoreticular malignancy, sarcoidosis, severe malnutrition, immune suppressive therapy, impaired cell mediated immunity and gamma interferon assay. Another advantage of gamma interferon assay, it does not test positive after UCB vaccination. So, exposure to tuberculosis bacilli is masked for IGRA, but in Mantu, even after BCG, Mantu will come positive. There is another, that is why IGRA is more specific. Extra pulmonary tuberculosis, what are the samples you will take? Urine, CSF, biopsy material, CSF from tubercular meningitis. There is a stump, spider web coagula. That usually is. You, if you keep the CSF in a room temperature, that will fall a spider web, makosha jaler moto acta combination hoy. If you keep in a, get a tuberculosis patient and CSF you keep in room temperature, that will form a big, why spider web coagulum is formed? Rationality, why it is formed? Because high level of protein is there in the tuberculosis, but even in bacterial meningitis. The protein concentration is increased and sugar is reduced. But in tubercular meningitis, protein concentration is so much increased that it can form the spider web problem. This is a newer diagnostic technique, whole genome sequencing. You just need not know the needs and bits of whole genome sequencing, just know the name, whole genome sequencing. You can a comprehensive review of the entire mycobacterium tuberculosis genotype. This is the upcoming, this is not in the theory, not in the book. Computer aided detection of chest radiograph. There is a software called CAD 4 TB, CAD CAD 4 TB. We even can analyze chest x ray and diagnose tuberculosis without any microbiology confirmation, suspected TB. So, this is a software based diagnosis of chest x ray also. This is the upcoming test, this is not in the book. CAD 4 TB is a software version 6. Now, what is MDR-TB? There are three terms. Now, MDR-TB, pre-XDR-TB, XDR-TB. So, what is MDR-TB? Resistance to rifampicin and INH. That is MDR-TB. This will be asked. This will even will be asked in exam. MDR-TB, resistance to isomiazide and rifampicin. Pre-XDR, this is a new term. Pre-XDR and XDR has come in 2020-21. So, this is pre-XDR TB caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. This is MDR. Plus, what is resistant in pre-XDR? It is resistance to any fluoroquinolone. Previously, what was the definition of XDR? XDR was defined as MDR TB plus fluoroquinolone plus any injectable anti-tubercular. That was the definition of XDR before 2021. Now, they has been divided into two, pre-XDR and XDR. Pre-XDR is MDR plus resistance to fluoroquinone because levofloxacin is used as an anti-tubercular drug. So, when it is pre-XDR, so another is XDR. That is resistance to fluoroquinone, additional group A drug. Group A drug means drugs which are used in second line of tuberculosis treatment. Which are the group A drug? Levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, beta coenine and linezolin. These are the resistance of fluoroquinolone and also this linezolin, group A drug. The, what is the advantage pre-XDR and XDR TB point to increasing progression to the severity of the disease and resistance to the drug. That pre-XDR term has been Innovative. The new definition of pre XDR and XDR TB applied from January 2021. So it was not there, only XDR was there. If older examiners come, you can tell this is the what is XDR, MDR plus fluoroquinolone plus any injectable drug. But this is the new definition pre XDR and XDR. Now this is the treatment protocol. Have you read anti-tubercular drug in pharmacology? Not yet. 
So what is the common drug, common for drug sensitive TB, which is not resistant to anybody? What is the duration of treatment? It is written six months. See, drug sensitive TB, resistant to no drug, rifampicin sensitive in CVNAT, that is 2 HREZ, INH, rifampicin, ethambutol, and pyrazinamide for two months, followed by four months of INH, rifampicin, and ethambutol. Now, what are the side effects? If you prescribe a patient antitubercular drug, what will be the common side effect for this drug? Rifampicin, you will get high colored urine or red colored urine. That is due to metabolite of rifampicin. Should you stop rifampicin for red urine? No. Next, pyrazinamide can do hepatitis. Are all drugs can do nausea vomiting. So, first two drugs will be first two months HREZ, that is INH, rifampicin, ethambutol, pyrazinamide. Then four months for HRE, that is INH, rifampicin and ethambutol. What is the change? Previously it was two drugs in the last four months, now it is three drugs that are used. This is the difference. Next, such a H, mono or polyregin, that is only INH resistant. How will you know the resistant pattern in uh, which? INH in which gene is resistant pattern is, how will you know the resistant? It is, it is the CAT G gene. CAT G gene for diagnostic of INH resistance. So, where is that? That is the levofloxacin, rifampicin, ethionamide and pyrazinamide. That is 6 to 9 months. Then newer regime, this is <coughs> H mono or poly regime for 6 to 9 months, that is levofloxacin along with rifampicin, ethambutol and pyrazinamide. Now these two shorter treatments, two newer treatments. What is the previous treatment for MDR-TB? It was 6 months followed by 18 months. Now it has been shortened. Because use of the new drug beta quilin. So now in National Tuberculosis Eradication Program, the drug that is used first is beta quilin along with other drugs. So beta quilin is a new drug for MDR TB. And what is the beta quilin? Shorter regime. Shorter beta quilin regime for 9 to 11 months. And all oral longer MDR TB regime for 18 to 1. So, duration of treatment is 9 to 11 months in case of shorter beta cooling regime, and for longer regime, 18 to 20 months. So, levofloxacin, beta coiling, ethiolamide, clofazimine, <coughs> pyrazinamide. INH and ethobiral is used for 5 months, followed by 6 months of levofloxacin, clofazimine, pyrazinamide and ethionamide. Next is all oral longer MDR-TB, beta coilin 18 to 20, total duration is 18 to 20 months, beta coilin along with others for 6 months, followed by levofloxacin, linezolid, clofazimine and cyclosine. So these regime, at least if you don't remember all the regimes, Remember two regimes, first is the two and four months for drug sensitive tuberculosis and drug resistant tuberculosis, what are the newer drug for because it is very difficult for your case to remember this shorter beta coilin but at least you tell the shorter beta coilin course, beta coilin with beta coilin the name and the longer beta coilin oral course, there are some indication where you can have to use the longer course, not the shorter beta coilin course for 9 to 11 months. So, 2 HREZ and 4 HRE, that is 2 months of rifampicin, INH, ethambutol and pyrazinamide, followed by 4 months of INH, rifampicin and ethambutol. When you will use the longer oral beta containing medium, all MDR TB patients with no history of prior exposure to these drugs for 1 month or more, no previous exposure of drug, 
no resistance to fluoroquinolone, no extensive TB defining presentation such as bilateral lung cavity, extensive parenchymal damage, miliary or meningeal or central nervous TB, children less than 5 years, pregnancy less than 32 weeks. These are contraindication for shorter beta cooling therapy. So, these are the part of this treatment algorithm integrated diagnostic and programmatic management of drug resistant tuberculosis. Now, before we go to some MCQ, let us recapitulate what you do, should, what are the things you do for tuberculosis diagnosis. One is sample, what are the sample for uh, pulmonary tuberculosis put up, about urine, how much urine will take for tuberculosis diagnosis for renal TB. How will we instruct the tuberculosis patient for extra pulmonary uh, tuberculosis, renal tuberculosis? Because there is very, tuberculosis bacilli is not regularly shared in the urine. So, you have to take three morning samples with at least 500 ml of urine each. Not the only 10 to 15 ml. At least 500 ml of urine to be taken for testing of tuberculosis that needs to be centrifuged and the deposit should be tested for acid first step. So, three morning sample with at least 500 ml of urine is needed. Previously what it was taken, 24 hours urine sample for three days were taken. So, three morning sample but not in a small quantity because this shedding of tuberculosis bacilli is not regular in urine. It's often regularly not shared. Next is CSF. CSF you cannot take more than 1 to 2 ml. Then another thing is other extra lymph node. Lymph node, how will you diagnose? You aspirate either do an FNSE or biopsy, send the biopsy sample to CBNAT because now all the extra pulmonary tuberculosis to be sent for CBNAT or molecular diagnosis. CSF tuberculosis or other things to be sent for molecular diagnostic upfront, not for smooth up, uh, it's near. Another way of diagnosing lymph node TB, what is the other method? You can get an histopathology picture. You can do a histopathology biopsy and pathologic histopathology, what will you get in a tubercular lymph node or any tubercular lesion with biopsy? You get a giant cell granuloma. So that is another diagnostic method of a sputum. We either do Jill Nielsen stain or fluorescent stain and we look for the grading and even after the diagnosis of sputum AFD positive, it will be sent for CBNET for diagnosing of resumption resistance. Next, how long it will take for the patient to become non infective A drug sensitive TB, you have started drug, how long at least you will ask the family member or the person to be cautious. After how many days, how many weeks, patient become non-infective. You need to tell the patient the how long patient will remain infective. What is the duration? After starting anti-tubercular drug, you have diagnosed tuberculosis, you have started anti-tubercular drug, what will you do? Anybody? Fourteen days, at least two weeks, is required for uh, diagnosing anti-tubercular uh, patient is non-infective. Now, cartilage-based nucleic acid amplification test. How it is done? Sputum is collected. Liquefying solution is given with the cartilage. You need to add that liquefying sample, a sample directly to the material given for the testing and you put the cartridge in the uh, CBNAT machine and you read the result after 2 hours. So that is gene expert, there is a given a cartridge, cartridge is 
you will given a material for reagent material where the thing DNA or those thing will be given for PCR because what is the test? Sibinat, what type of test is this? Sibinat, I have not done slide. I will ask, uh, Sibinat is cut is best nucleic acid amplification test. It is a PCR. What type of PCR is this? What is simple PCR? What is multiplex PCR? Multiplex PCR means more than one gene is detected. So this is a nested PCR. One is that is also the two things. One is detected is the identification of tuberculosis, and second part is identification of reformation. Other categories come where is detecting the second line drug instead. So what you should remember? What is the turnaround time? Turnaround time is two hours. It is a nested real time PCR. Nested means first it detects the tuberculosis, then it is also detects the RPOB gene. At least you remember two genes for resistance. One is for repumpicin, RPOB gene is used to detect the repumpicin resistance. CAT G gene is used for detection of INH resistance. CAT G gene for INH resistance and RPOB gene for detecting the diffamation resistance. So that is done after resistance. Even if, if you get the first line resistance, what you should do? You should advise line probe assay. Line probe assay should detect the other drug resistance pattern. So what are the flow chart? Do a sputum examination and chest x-ray. If a patient comes fever and cough for two weeks, you go for the excess day, if it is suggestive lesion, there is a lesion in the upper lobe or patient having other symptoms like weight loss, anorexia, these are other constitutional symptoms for tuberculosis, go for sputum examination and chest x-ray followed by, if it is suggestive, if it is not also suggestive, go for sputum for acid first decimal. How many samples? Two samples, one stat, one next morning. After sputum for AFB, if it detects sputum for AFB, it's well and good. Then you send for CVNAT to detect the repumpation resistance, then start the drug. This is the one protocol when the algorithm, some part algorithm is there, some complicated algorithm. So this is, you, again smear positive but not chest x not suggestive, smear negative, chest x suggestive, smear negative, chest x not suggestive. MTB if it is detected or CVNAT, rot result not available, then you do reef sensitive, microbiologically confident reef intermediate, repeat CVNAT if it is, if it is not equivocal, if not as given or the resistant or not resistant, then go for repeat CVNAT. Reef resistance, refer management for reef resistance. Now, sometimes we do, why we do IGRA, not doing other TB tests, patient having not, no other symptoms of tuberculosis, but sometimes in, uh, now here colony, you look at the colony character of Levinson Jensen media. What would be the colony character? Rough, buff, and tough colony. The colonies are buff colored, it is rough and tough to remove from the Lowenstein Jensen media. So this is the characteristic of tubercle colony in the Lowenstein Jensen media, rough, buff and tough colony. Remember what is the colony in Lowenstein Jensen media? It takes at least two to four weeks to develop the colony, rough, buff and tough colony in Lowenstein Jensen media. And the left side media. Now, Lowenstein Jensen media. Have you read in practical about the media already? What is the content of Lowenstein Jensen media? Why it looks green? What is the malachite green? So, what is the role of malachite green? Have we added malachite green only for the coloring the media? So, it will be look good on green. What is the rationality of adding malachite green? 
and it is two percent malachite green. I am taking the two percent. Why we have we have added malachite green? How long? Um, what is the rationality of adding malachite green? As we have seen, sputa will contain other bacteria also. So malachite green making the media selective. It kills the other bacteria other than tuberculosis. That's why malachite green is added. Malachite green two percent is added. What other than the content of uh, Lewinstein Jensen media? This is an egg based media. This is a hen egg. If you prepare one liter of Lewinstein Jensen media in a liquid, you have to add twenty hen egg. For so this is an egg based media. Other mineral acids are those things, and then how will you sterilize or how will you solidify? In all other media, in Macomki, Newton, Dagger, what is done for sterilization? It is given in autoclave. So how will you? What is the method of sterilizing, or what is the method of solidifying? Usually, all the media are prepared in liquid form. So, how it solidifies? What is the solidifying agent? How it solidifies? In Newton agar or Macomki or blood agar, agar is the solidifying agent for two percent agar is added. Now, what is the solidifying agent in Lewinstein Jensen media? Egg is the solidifying agent. Egg is added. For the one of the nutrition, and the second is solidifying agent. And how it is solidified? How it is sterilized? It is inspissated at seventy-seven degrees centigrade for consecutive three days. For one hour, for consecutive three days. So Lewinstein Jensen media, mineral acid, eggs, and the malachite green is added. Egg is the solidifying agent, and the It is not autoclave. Autoclave that initial part can be autoclave, but after adding egg or malachite green, it is usually inspissated. Inspissated for one hour daily for consecutive three days to make the media solid. And what is the colony character? Because rough, buff, and tough colony, and you have need to do the acid first stain again to confirm it is acid first bacillus. Middle books media is mainly used for back tech MGIT TV. What is the liquid culture media? What is the advantage? Turn around time is less. It can come in two weeks or twenty days. Two weeks or three weeks, it can come positive. How it look like in a liquid media? When you see in an inverted microscope, serpentine cord like character will appear. Just remember the serpentine cord like in liquid media when you see in a inverted microscope in liquid media. This is not automated manual liquid media when you not using any automated machine. Serpentine cord like structure will appear and that will can be seen in an inverted microscope. Next is MGIT. These are back teller and back tech MGIT. These are the two automated liquid culture media. What is backtech and colonimetry based, and backtech MGIT, which is commonly used? How it it gives fluorescence. So why it is not giving fluorescence? Because usually oxygen quenches the fluorescence activity. When the oxygen is there in the media, it will not fluoresce. But when oxygen is decreased and carbon dioxide, when microbacteria grows, it consumes the oxygen and carbon dioxide is liberated. That's why the quenching effect of oxygen is lost, and there will be fluorescence. That is the principles of backtech MGIT. This can be asked. Backtech MGIT liquid media. What is the principle? Again, drug sensitivity test. These are still it is going on, even with CBDAT in the nodal centers. These are the three methods used for drug sensitivity. Even it has come in the MCQ this year for second day, your final exam. The proportion method, one percent proportion method, absolute concentration method. Gene expert, I have already discussed. This I have already discussed. 
whole genome sequencing. This is also PDR MDM. Now, few MCQ. Symptom of uh, question, uh, can you see? It is very small. So, so, okay, later you can come to me. I will give this printout for few MCQs in the microbacter and tuberculosis. And then you do the MCQ and give me the answers. So, I am not telling the answers now. You can take this part and print out. I will. You can, when you go for practical anyone, will uh, take it from Raja. Okay, these two part MCQ and then answer. Okay, any question from your side? Coming to our discussion topic, we have to know what are the possible intracellular accumulation. So, the accumulation which is few cases normal or in few cases abnormal. So, intracellular means the accumulation which occurs inside the cell, inside the cell membrane. Okay. So, intracellular accumulation is invariably the manifestation of metabolic dearrangement. Okay. Accumulation may be transient and reversible or permanent. Effects are harmless to toxic. And there are three categories of intracellular accumulation. First, that is the byproduct of normal cellular metabolism. Next, accumulation of abnormal substances of abnormal cell metabolism. And third, and the last is accumulation of pigment. So, a cell is thrived to cellular metabolism for its own survival and for the survival of the tissue. So, accumulation of normal cellular metabolism comprised of three categories, namely protein, fats and carbohydrate. Okay? And the accumulation of abnormal substances of abnormal cell metabolism are namely the defect in scaffolding action or the transport of protein action defect of endoplasmic reticulum. So, namely the storage diseases and the inborn error of metabolism are categorized in the intracellular accumulation of abnormal cellular metabolism. Okay? And the thirds are accumulation of pigments. The pigments are of two types. One is endogenous pigment that the pigments derive from our own body and the exogenous pigment or namely the tattoo. Okay. So, coming to the intracellular accumulation, namely there are four types, lipids, proteins, glycogens and pigments. The most common is lipids, accumulation of intracellular lipid. That is the most common scenario in our everyday practice. Okay? The accumulation of lipid is known as steatosis okay? and it occurs in various organs. Steatosis is accumulation of fat, accumulation of cholesterol and cholesterol ester. Accumulation of protein and glycogen are also be present but in laser preponderance and accumulation of pigment is also less common than accumulation of fat. So, accumulation of fat or cholesterol or cholesterol is ester is the most common intracellular accumulation derived from normal cell metabolism. Now, mechanism of intracellular accumulation first is abnormal metabolism, alteration in protein folding and transport by endoplasmic reticulum, deficiency of critical enzymes as depicted in glucosidase, as depicted in uh, other enzymes which are categorically 
classified in common name as inborn error of metabolism. And the last is inability to degrade phagocytose particle. So these are the possible mechanism of intracellular accumulation. Abnormal metabolism, alteration is protein folding and transport, deficiency of critical enzymes and inability to degrade phagocytose particle or phagolysosome accumulation. Now coming to the most common portion fatty changes or steatosis, fatty metamorphosis, intracellular accumulation of neutral fat or triglyceride within the parenchymal cells. This is more common in liver. Okay. So liver is our metabolic factory, the powerhouse of our body and it is involved in innumerous numbers of cellular metabolism. So liver is the most common site of intracellular accumulation of lipid or free cholesterol or triglyceride ester. So this is called as steatosis or hepatic steatosis. But it can also occur in heart and large vessels, coronary vessel namely as atherosclerosis. Okay? and skeletal muscle and also kidneys but most common and most predominant pattern of lipid accumulation is steatosis of liver ok. So accumulation is liver in liver is most common entity. Causes of fatty liver chronic alcohol abuse very dangerous so if a person is chronically addicted to alcohol, he or she may eventually develop alcoholic fatty liver or alcoholic steatosis in subsequent time. Obesity is another important cause because obesity is a condition which a person has excess body fat. Excess body fat may be deposited in skin, subcutaneous tissue, in gut and also in solid organs like liver also in blood vessels of heart and other critical organs like brain. So protein malnutrition, starvation, suffering or death caused by lack of food, drugs and toxin, various drugs and toxin, namely anti-epileptic drug, phenobarbiton, okay, valproate, these are carbamazepine, these are known to have deleterious effect of alcoholic st uh, hepatic steatosis okay anoxia and pregnancy so pregnancy related alcoholic fatty changes uh, pregnancy related hepatic steatosis is also important factor and one of the important cause in pregnant females so but most common is alcohol abuse or chronic alcohol dependence now this is a Cut surface of which organ? Huh? Liver. So this is a gross appearance when the alcoholic uh, steatosis or fatty liver occurs in liver parenchyma. So on cut surface, it has a smooth blistering surface. Okay, and cut surface is shiny, greasy, and yellow. Okay. This is liver cut surface. So this is shiny, okay. But the cut surface is smooth. But in case of cirrhosis of liver, we can see in your specimen of liver, long question cirrhosis of liver, the appearance of liver is nodular, irregular, okay. But in case of fatty liver changes or alcoholic steatosis, the cut surface of liver, how does it look? smooth surfaced okay cut surface is greasy yellow and surface is regular no irregularity or no nodularity is seen in early stages of alcoholic steatosis okay now other lipid accumulation namely i told you atherosclerosis xanthoma okay these are the other manifestation of lipid accumulation inside our body. In atherosclerosis, what does it occur? Cholesterol accumulates in the 
innermost layer that is intima. So, artery has three layer. One is adventitia, next is tunica media or muscular layer, smooth muscle layer and the endothelial layer is intima. So, the intracellular accumulation of fat has a tendency to deposit in the intimal layer or the endothelial layer. So, this is called as atherosclerosis and the cholesterol accumulates in smooth muscle cells and macrophages in the intima of the artery. And in hereditary hyperlipemia, cholesterol accumulates in macrophages, skin. We have macrophages, tissue macrophages that is present inside our skin and subcutaneous tissue. Those are commonly named as APC, antigen presenting cells or histiocytes. So, these are basically specialized macrophage and this macrophage sends the lipid or cholesterol ester as foreign body. They take up the cholesterol and the fatty material and form as foamy histiocytes. Okay? Formation of foamy histiocytes, formation occurs in, inside the skin and subcutaneous tissue that is known as xanthoma. So, coming to the picture, atherosclerosis, common causes of many diseases, xanthoma less common and cholesterosis is accumulation of foam cell like cholesterol in gut and gallbladder. Okay? So, atherosclerosis occurs in artery, intimal layer of artery, xanthoma occur in skin and subcutaneous tissue and cholesterosis occur in gallbladder. So, why is the gallbladder? Because gallbladder has a very important role in fat metabolism. Taito. So, this is a normal artery, adventitial layer, medial layer and intimal layer, tear in the arterial wall by free radical injury or any break, okay, minor damage to the intimal wall and fatty material deposited in the vessel wall. So, the lumen got narrower. Okay, due to deposition of fatty material inside the vessel wall in the intimal layer and whenever the artery lumen or artery caliber is narrowed down, then what does it occur in the next step? The next step occur following the accumulation of fat in intimal layer is stasis of the blood. Okay, the blood which has been designed to flow in the blood vessel lumen in a larger speed or in a more speed, but with accumulation of fat, the intima in intimal layer, the lumen of the artery got narrowed down and it means the stasis of the blood, the flow of the blood is slowed down and with the slowing of the blood flow, Along with the intimal break and the free radical injury, the platelet thrombi are begin to accumulate in the intimal layer and there is formation of thrombi. Okay? So, narrow artery becomes blood by a blood clot. This is known as atherosclerosis and if this thrombus any part of the thrombus is dislodged by the blood flow and settled to another distal location. What does it call? Emboli. Okay, very good. So, this is a gross appearance of xanthoma and this is the microscopic appearance of xanthoma. Subcutaneous tissue, we can see the yellowish tinge and the nodularity. You can appreciate that. Okay, knobby appearance. So, this is a clue that a patient may have defect in lipid metabolism and the lipid accumulation in the dermis, how does it look under the microscope? This is. So, these are the cells, okay, these are the foamy cells, foamy histiocytes. The, this is the nucleus of the cell and in the cytoplasm, white is cytoplasm, there are foamy appearance and accumulation of the lipid. So, in xanthoma, we can get histopathological examination or biopsy picture like this, 
where accumulation of foamy histiocytes in the subcutaneous tissue and dermis. Okay. Clear everybody? So, another next important picture is cholesterosis. We can see the foamy histiocytes. Okay. In high power. See, this is the nucleus of the cell and this is the cytoplasm and this cytoplasm is carrying lipid. Okay. The cytoplasm, this is the cytoplasm, this is the cytoplasm, these are the cytoplasm. Okay. So, this cytoplasm has foamy appearance. Okay. This is the epithelial tissue. This is a picture of gallbladder cholesterosis, cholesterosis of gallbladder. And this is the accumulation of foamy histiocytes. This is nothing but the specialized macrophage in the tissue. They take, take up the fat cell and formation of foamy histiocytes occur. Okay. Everybody can see this picture from the last, last row. This is a nuclear cell. Our ages cell and nucleus glow dotted. Okay, dots. Blue dots are nucleus and the cytoplasm are foamy and containing lipids. So, this is called cholesterosis. Okay, now coming to the intracellular protein accumulation. I told you that intracellular protein accumulation, they may be result of excessive amount of normal proteins and defective intracellular transport and secretion of proteins. So, excessive amount of normal proteins are mainly seen in multiple myeloma as Russell body. So, what does the multiple myeloma disease does to our, do our body? That is increased uncontrolled monoclonal proliferation and production of immunoglobulin secreting cells. Okay. What cells secret immunoglobulin? B cells, plasma cells. Plasma cells. So, in multiple myeloma, there are monoclonal proliferation or the unput downable proliferation and production of immunoglobulin. So, from the increased amount of plasma cells in our body. So, the excessive amount of immunoglobulin is deposited as a cytoplasmic globules, namely commonly known as Russell body. Okay. So, I will see you, show you the pictures in later. And another intracellular protein accumulation defect is intracellular transport and secretion of protein due to mutation in which gene? CFTR gene, chromosome 7, that is the cystic fibrosis. So, defective intracellular transport and secretion of protein and accumulation of mucin in AROA and in lungs. So, the patient will suffer from tachypnea, dyspnea and difficulty of breathing and unfortunate kids are very small lifespan. They may not cross their second decade of their life. Hi Nana, Acta Cinema, Netflix. Hi Nana, Hi Papa. Hi, Papa. Nani Ache. South Indian. That's movie. Involve a small child, a girl child who has, CF, who has CFTR gene mutation or cystic fibrosis. So, this is a very dangerous. So, all the diseases which encompasses the defective cellular metabolism or deficiency of any enzymes are mostly autosomal recessive, okay? And the diseases of defect in structural proteins are mostly autosomal dominant. So, this is cystic fibrosis is a intracellular accumulation of abnormal protein and it is a autosomal recessive type of disorder. So, defect in protein folding, defect in intracellular transport and secretion, 
endoplasmic reticular stress induced by unfolded and misfolded protein and accumulation of endoplasmic reticulum. So, ER stress, a short note, very important. Okay. So, ER stress is main thing to cause intracellular accumulation of protein, aggregation of abnormal and misfolded proteins in tissue in cystic fibrosis. So, this is amyloidosis picture. Okay. Tongue and subcutaneous tissue. This is also an example of abnormal protein accumulation in skin and subcutaneous tissue and mucous membrane. Okay, round eosinophilic droplets, vacuoles or aggregates in cytoplasm may be amorphous or crystalline. Example is amyloidosis. There are many diseases. You need to just know the examples and the defects, whether the protein folding defect, whether the ER stress defect, whether the transport of the protein defect whether any enzyme defect, okay. So, this is the example of intracellular protein accumulation or accumulation of abnormal protein namely amyloidosis. Amyloidosis is a very important topic for your professional examination and internal assessment examination. It will be taught later, okay. Now, excessive normal proteins or immunoglobulin, this is Russell body, okay. This is plasma cell, okay normal plasma cell, B cell or plasma cell, okay, eccentric nucleus, cytoplasm, moderate amount of cytoplasm, on a dimer moto dekte, ovoid, ovoid shape, but this is Russell body, okay. So, immunoglobulin are deposited inside the cell in cytoplasm and abnormal production of the normal protein or immunoglobulin. So, this is our picture of Russell body. Okay, everybody can see this picture. So, this is Russell body, this is plasma cell. Okay. Now, the cut surface of the lungs affected by cystic fibrosis. You can see the mucin plugs entangled over here. Okay, this is trachea, this is two lungs. Okay, tracheobronchial tree and you can see the whitish thick tenacious mucus. Okay, the, whenever the mucus is more thick, the mucus is very hard to expel and the, when the mucus is thinner, the mucus is easy to expel. So, in cystic fibrosis due to effect, due to defect in CFTR gene, the defect in enzyme alpha 1 which enzyme? Alpha 1 antitrypsin. The enzyme defected is mucus clearance and these mucus are clogged within the tracheobronchial tree. Now intracellular accumulation of glycogen. Abnormal metabolism of glucose and glycogen result in excessive intracellular accumulation in uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Okay. So, the carbohydrate metabolism, whenever altered, the most important disease or most important disease in our common practice of defective carbohydrate metabolism is diabetes mellitus. Sugar wala yamena, purikhai. Diabetes mellitus, okay. So, in diabetes mellitus, abnormal carbohydrate metabolism occurs and intracellular accumulation of glycogen occur in liver, in kidney, okay, in blood vessels, everywhere in the body, like macroangiopathic effect, microangiopathic effect. So, coming to the last intracellular accumulation of pigments. So, what are the pigments? Endogenous pigments and Exogenous pigments, endogenous pigments are huh? lipofuscin, melanin, very good. Most important endogenous pigment is melanin and melanin is a pigment. How does it form melanogenesis from the knowledge of biochemistry? Amino acid, which amino acid? Tyrosine. So, pigments can be exogenous or endogenous. So, endogenous pigment list, melanin, most important, melanin like pigment, 
deposition in diseases like alkaptonuria, Dubin Johnson syndrome in liver, hemoprotein derived pigments, hemosiderin, okay, acid hematin or hemozoin, bilirubin, another hemoglobin byproduct, bilirubin, porphyrin, and lipofuscin, that is wear and tear pigment. Very important for short note, lipofuscin, okay, wear and tear pigment. And from the exogenous pigments are inhaled pigment and injected pigment, okay. But most important is melanin. And exogenous pigments are inhaled due to inoculation by injection or by ingestion in case of coal worker, mine worker, those have high, uh, those who have tendency and have to work in highly polluted areas where the very particular amount of coal in pre is present in atmosphere. So, exogenous pigments are carbon, anthracosis, accumulation of carbon in lung, coal dust, pneumoconiosis, okay, lung pick up by the alveolar macrophage and regional lymph node and blackening of the tissue of the lung, that is anthracosis. So, the people or the coal miner, those who work in coal, or in mine have contact with coal or anthracites in their lifetime, they have a tendency to develop invariably anthracosis in their lung. So, the lungs, alveolar macrophage take, take the pigment and the lungs take a color of black black lung. So, this is a picture of lung. Okay, you can see the black pigment over here inside the lobe, inside the alveolus. The black streaks seen between the lobules of the lung beneath the pleural surface are due to accumulation of anthracotic pigments. So, this is the gross appearance of the lungs. The black streaks are mostly due to accumulation of coal or anthracosis, okay. And whenever we have chance to dissect it and make it a slide from the tissue, the slide looks like this way. Anthracotic pigment, these are nothing but the alveolar macrophages taking up the black pigment coming from the coal, okay. Pigments gulo is a cytoplasmic pigment, intracellular accumulation of pigments, anthracotic pigment in macrophages in hyaline lymph node. Jokon lipid jomechilo cele, tokon ki de kiachilam, foamy histiocytes, cyto, cytoplasm gulo foamy chilo, cholesterol niye niye chilo, arekane macrophage gulo ki niye niye chhe, black pigments, cyto, anthracotic pigment. So, our Policeman of the tissue is macrophage. Whenever any foreign body are encountered by the macrophage, the macrophage has a large shape of cytoplasm and a pseudopodia like action. So, any foreign body they are taken up by the macrophage and the macrophage they alter their cytoplasmic texture according to the nature of foreign body or nature of the accumulation or nature of the pigment, okay. So, anthracotic pigment are seen all over the cytoplasms of the cells, okay. These are the nucleus, alveolar macrophage and these are the anthracotic pigment deposited in alveolar macrophage cytoplasm. Everybody from the last row, your tattoo man. Injected pigments or tattooing, pigments like India ink, cinnabar, carbon are introduced in the dermis in the process of tattooing where the pigment is taken by the, again the pigment is taken by the macrophages, okay, histiocytes or the antigen presenting cell, there are many names of macrophage and lies permanently in the connective tissue. The examples are injected pigments are prolonged use of ointments containing mercury and tattooing by pricking the skin with dyes. Anybody have tattoo? 
in the class? No one. Acha. So this is a classic example of exogenous pigment and very common nowadays in player, in film star. Okay, they are fond of tattooing. Now the wear and tear pigment, lipofuscin. Use of liposomal digestion. So this is wear and tear pigment. Okay, lipofuscin comes from the abnormal lipid metabolism okay liposomal digestion found in liver kidney heart muscle retina adrenals nerve cell and ganglion cell but most common deposition of lipofuscin is site is liver okay so this is the cardiac muscle lipofuscin is a pigment golden yellow pigment abnormal liposomal digestion the golden yellow pigment, it is cardiac myocyte that cardiac cell special multinucleated cells that nucleus are golden yellow brown pigment. This is wear and tear pigment. Wear and tear pigment in hepatocytes, hepatocytes, nucleus of the hepatocytes are golden yellow pigment, lipofuscin. So, this is lipofuscin in hepatocytes. Now, coming to the melanin, the most common endogenous pigment, the pigment that gives human skin, hair, and eyes their color. Melanin is produced by the call, cells called melanocytes. Okay? Amino acid tyrosine is followed by polymerize, polymerization and multi stage chemical procedure of formation of melanin that is called melanogenesis. So, disorder of melanin pigmentation, whether melanin are present in abundance or the melanin are present in scars. So, if the melanin is present in abundance, that is called hyperpigmentation. And if the melanin are scarce in our body, less produced than required, then it is called hyperpigmentation. So, hyperpigmentation, there are examples of generalized hyperpigmentation and localized hyperpigmentation. Among the generalized local uh, generalized hyperpigmentation, the disease are Addison's disease and colasma. Okay, metabolic disease due to overproduction of mineralocorticoid. Okay, so tendency of hyperpigmentation all over the body. This is colasma are common in the female who are taking OCP, oral contraceptive pill for birth control measure are prone to develop colasma in their skin and subcutaneous tissue in later half or to third to fourth decade of their life after prolonged ingestion of oral contraceptive pills. Okay. Taole generalized with Addison's disease and colasma, a localized Pugh-Zegar syndrome and melanosis coli. This is colon and formation of blackish patch in colon and Pugh-Zegar syndrome is formation of subcutaneous blackish pigmentation in skin and mucous membrane. So generalized example of hyperpigmentation, Addison's disease and colasma and localized example of hyperpigmentation is Pugh-Zegar syndrome and melanosis coli. Okay. Next hypopigmentation. Generalized hypopigmentation is called as albinism, okay? And localized form is known as vitiligo. So these two diseases or these two entities are caused due to less production of melanin. Very good. Now hemosiderin, another endogenous pigment, okay? Hemosiderin. Hemosiderin is mainly involved in storage and transport of iron okay so hemoglobin derived golden yellow to brown granular or crystalline pigment major storage form of iron hemosiderin is an iron storage complex 
denatured ferritin and other material the iron within deposits hemosiderin is very poorly available to supply iron when needed so hemosiderin pigmentation occurs in the patient of thalassemia okay thalassemia patient or chronic hemolytic patient they have an urgency to multiple episodes of blood transfusion in their lifetime so with every blood transfusion episode every time the iron load in our body will be increased so after a uh, episode of 15 to 18 years okay these diseases like major chronic hemolytic anemia thalassemia those patient who have received frequent blood transfusion are prone to develop hemosiderin deposition in their liver okay so these endogenous pigment iron pigment appears as pores golden granular pigment lying within the cell cytoplasm is eglocha so it the liver so liver is the main thing main powerhouse or factory metabolic factory of our body so any pigment has the most affinity to deposit in liver for our own homeostasis purpose jodokkhon liver take up korte pacche todokkhon o amake beshi oshubidha korbe na jokhon liver er capacity aste aste reversible theke irreversible er dike chole jabe tokhon amar somoshya gulo shuru hobe thik ache tale these are hepatocytes nucleus of the hepatocytes and the cytoplasm are laded with iron pigment appears as pores golden granular pigment lying within the cell cytoplasm ai je granular pigment pores pigment dekhte pacche sobai so this is hemosiderin laden macrophages okay very common in patients of ki bollam thalassemia thik ache odher iron profile raised hobe bilirubin raised hobe keno liver function aste aste noshto hoye jay for repeated blood transfusion iron overload पढ़ते एगुलो सब पढ़ा तो थैंक यू सो एक टेबल रकम क्वेश्चन थक देर उल बी वन द क्वेश्चन उड बी लाइक दिस फ्रॉम दिस प्लेट एस्टिमेट दि एज एंड रईट दि मेडिकोलिकल मेडिकोलिकल ओपिनियन्स और अबाउट दिस मीस अबाउट दिस टपिक अबाउट दिस टपिक बोलते एक प्रत्येक टेबले एक आईटेम थे सो एक टेबले हम स्काल थकलो बोन्सर एकटाते थकल एक्सरे जेटा ये और एक थक पयन ठीक है आईडेंटिफाई दि पयन एंड रईट रईट मेडिकोलिकल एसपेक्ट अबाउट इट ए रकम तर हे वेपन यगल बेसिकाली प्रैक्टिकल एक्सामे आसे सब जगह जेको कलेजे सेम जिन तो ওটার একটা পার্ট প্র্যাকটিক্যালে সো এরকম একটা স্লাইড দেওয়া থাকবে এক্সরে আলাদা আলাদা নট দিস সেম স্লাইড উইল বি গিভেন টু ইউ এভরি টাইম সো উইল চেঞ্জ দিস স্লাইড মিন স্লাইডস অলসো এক্সরে প্লেট ওকে সো দি ফার্স্ট থিং দি হ্যাভ টু রাইট ইজ হোয়াট ইজ দিস ঠিক আছে সো অ্যাজ ইউ গেট দি এক্সরে ইউ হ্যাভ টু রাইট হোয়াট ইজ দিস হোয়াট ইজ দি দ্য এক্সামিনার উইল উইল অলসো বি আস্কিং দি সেম কোয়েশ্চেন হোয়াট ইজ দিস so you have to answer in a scientific way so what would be the answer the answer should be like this so write it down it is a diagram of whichever it may be a j l r r thik ache l mane left hand r mane right hand thik ache so shei hisebe tumra bujhte parbe je ota left hand er x ray na right hand er otherwise you can't okay so it is a diagram of left or right elbow joint in which view it has a anterior posterior view lateral view hote pare and another one is oblique view so oblique view is not needed here we need anterior posterior and lateral view anterior posterior and lateral view so in case of age estimation also we uh, normally for elbow joint we prescribe anterior posterior or and lateral view thik ache so erokom bhabe eta lekha hoye geche 
this this you have to write in this answer you have to write in exam also exam age jokhon oi topic ta mane item ta asbe oi item ta ke ebhabe amader reply korte hobe ki ki bone ache data amra dekhte whatever the bones we are viewing it we have to write it down like showing upper and lower end of humerus thik ache oi bhabe रेडियस एनल ना ये यो मेन्शन करते हैं जो रेस्ट जयंट आसे तेल कार्पल बोन्स तर डिस्टल एंड अफ रेडियस डिस्टल एंड अफ आलना वगलो मेन्शन करते हैं रेस्ट जयंटर जो आलदा एक क्लस है ये एलबो जयंटर जो बिकज बेसिकाली इन एक्सामस उल वि प्रोवाइडिंग यू एलबो जयंट रेस्ट जयंट एंड पेलविस चिफलि बिकज दोज आर दि दोज आईटेम्स मीस दोज are the prominent things that we can guess the age from thik ache tahole eta lekha hoye geche er pore eta lekho eta likhe nao x ray findings e x ray of elbow joint e ki ki lage amader medial epicondyle lateral epicondyle olecranon tip process are radial head ठीक है एगुलो लेखो और वोने पास लिखे एपियार नट एपियार फ्यूज नट फ्यूज यह so this thing should be correlated with the chart on the right hand side you can see that is gallstone chart gallstone chart is important because it is for the bengali population gallstone chart g a l s t a u n gallstone chart so gallstone was a did the study of bengali population on bengali population and got the parameters means he got which means uh, by the data from that study that when the uh, when fusion happens when appearance happen in bengali population theek okay, ache gallstone he did the study on and it is accepted by high court calcutta high court that is why the chart is important so every state may have different charts according to their population so for west bengal gallstone chart is accepted as we are in west bengal we'll follow this so from this we'll determine the age okay because uh, the x ray plate that will be provided to you will be from this our means bengal bengali population our college only the plates will be provided to you so we have to how to uh, mean interpret this uh, uh, chart i will tell you you have noted this down right so next thing you should note is this one opinion the third part third part opinion eta lekho so the x ray has to be in exam has to be interpreted in three parts first is what is this you have to identify this uh, slide then is the body part that is that appeared or not appeared and the third is the opinion part so you write it down as it is as it is in exam also you just have to write as it is only the values will change as per your uh, what do you call as per your interpretation we cannot give the age uh, exact age like we we cannot say he is 14 years old or he is 15 years old we cannot say that we have to give it in a range so it is above and below above ato below ato 
will always give it in a range. Why so? Because in biology there is variation. So due to uh, natural environment or uh, climate, the uh, pattern means the ossification age may vary from one or two years or more even sometimes. That's why. And this is for normal, normal people. No, don't consider like uh, abnormal people, those uh, means uh, having disease or something like that. Okay, for them this is not going to help. It is for in general population. Okay. So, three parts. First is, what is this? Heading. What is this? You will write that one, what you have written. Then there is body part. What appeared, what not appeared, what fuse, not fuse. And the third is the opinion part. Okay. Fine. So, let us start with little bit of anatomy of the wrist joint. As you can see, distal end of humerus, what is this? Proximal end of ulna and radius, okay, fine. What is this? Radius. So, this side is what? Medial or lateral? Lateral. This side is medial, okay, fine, clear. So, C R I T O E, this is a mnemonic, okay. Mnemonic to remember the age of appearance of ossification centers. C is for capitulum, R is for radial head, T is for trochlea, O is for olecranon process, and E is for external epicondyle. External means lateral epicondyle. I is internal epicondyle. Okay. Internal epicondyle. This E is for external. Internal meaning medial side. And E means lateral side. Clear? So, this is a mnemonic. Nothing else. So, in x-ray, you can identify those things. Just above radial head is capitulum. Okay. Just above radial head is capitulum. What is external? Lateral to it is what? Lateral epicondyle. Here, trochlea. Above trochlea is olecranon process. And just later, uh, medial to it is internal, medial epicondyle or internal epicondyle. Okay, fine. So, see the age of appearance. Okay. Here, first is C, capitulum. Capitulum appears at one, one year age of age. Here it is, okay. Capitulum. Then R. R is radial head, 4 to 5 years. Then what? Medial epicondyle, 4 to 5 years. Almost similar. These values are almost similar. Then what? C R C R I. Then T. T is for trochlea. Where is trochlea? Okay, then O, olecranon process. Then E, external epicondyle. 10 years. Okay, this is the mnemonic to remember the appearance. Okay. So, how will it appear in X ray? Means this one, everything is fused. That is why you will not find that gap. Here you can see there is a gap, radial head, okay? And these are the mnemonic, it is not important right now, we will proceed further. So, now coming to the gallstone chart, how to interpret, okay? Ekhane shop dekhte baatsho, eta ki hoye chhe, appear hoye chhe, radial head appear hoye chhe, na hoye ni, appeared, not appeared, ossification center, appeared, not appeared, no idea, 
see there is a gap okay so it has appeared but not fused appeared not fused fine what about this appeared not fused where is the what do you call lateral epicondyle where is it appeared not appeared not appeared what about this medial epicondyle appeared but not fused fine so you can now interpret this x ray now this should be compared with this chart the above part is for elbow joint okay then comes wrist joint that we will learn in another class so in this class we will learn about elbow joint means this class is about elbow joint you should be uh, perfecting elbow joint in this class so you have to know what things you will need for estimation of age first is the medial epicondyle lateral epicondyle and tip of olecranon and radial head these four things from these four things we can estimate the age we don't need trochlea and we don't need capitulum as per this chart so only by this four by this uh, four value means parameters we can estimate the age so for males it is different little different female it is different females is just two years earlier most values and in males it will be two years later okay that is mostly the difference so can you uh, is this uh, numbers visible to you is visible or you can uh, adjust yourself so that it becomes visible okay so now try to estimate the age from this slide that is your task so that is the question that will come in exam a slide theke tumra estimate korbe opinion jeta ache form koro thik ache this will be the question so first you will write that part take a fresh page take a fresh page and just try to answer this question uh, what i have given is the first part write it down this is a what is a, just the x ray what is this x ray about take it as a test you will start writing with the heading part first write it down i will check ki likho this is a likhecho लिखो फिर से अलग से अलग अन्य एक पेज है यू हैव टू प्रैक्टिस दिस अ लॉट अदरवाइज यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू आंसर इन टेन मिनट्स इन एग्जाम यू विल जस्ट गेट दिस आइटम फॉर ओनली टेन मिनट्स दैट्स वाई आई एम मोर एम्फोसाइजिंग ऑन द प्रैक्टिकली मीन्स टीच यू विल आई विल स्पून फिड यू दिस पार्ट सो यू रिटर्न हेडिंग पार्ट this is a x ray showing what or this is anterior posterior view this is lateral view so do you know which of which hand right hand what uh, what if i flip this uh, x ray then what you won't know likha nahi so while answering you will say assuming it as left hand assuming it as left hand whether it is female or male not written so this type of question will be asked in your exam they will be asking this uh, of which hand is it you want to if i if i have not told you night right now that this sort of question will be asked you will have not known in exam you will sit what to answer so this set, uh, this sort of questions will be asked next will be if nothing is given left or right assume it assume it as left hand okay left hand and whether sex is not mentioned here male female is not mentioned here then also you will assume it as what female left hand female okay fine assuming it is assuming it as female okay then ka ota likha hoyeche opinion e tale ota likho 
this is a uh, this is a skygram of left elbow in which view anterior posterior and lateral view showing which which bones are copied from the whatever you have written before बच्चे सी हाउ डिफिकल्ट इट बिकम्स वेन यू हैव टू अटेंड इट इन एग्जाम सो यू नीड प्रैक्टिस इट मे सीम इजी बट इट एंट इजी वी हैव डन दिस मे बी हंड्रेड टाइम्स और मोर स्टील वी हैव टू रेफर एंड राइट वेन वी हैव टू सबमिट इट इन बिफोर कोर्ट इट शुड बी एक्यूरेट ओके हलो देखे देखे लेखा हलो ठीक है यार सेकेंड पार्ट फाइंडिंगस ए फाइंडिंग से क्यों लिखते हैं फार्ष्ट मीडियल एपिकंडाइल ठीक है मीडियल एपिकंडाइल कथाय आपियार नट फ्यूज सो यू रईट इट डाउन फाइंडिंगस दें मीडियल एपिकंडाइल दिए एपियार नट फ्यूज ठीक है नेक्स्ट पैरामिटर लैटरल एपिकंडाइल नट एपियार बस नट एपियार बस लिख नट एपियार फाइन तर टीप अफ अलेक्ट्रन ऑन प्रसेस आई नट एपेयर ठीक और एक रेडियल हेड आपेयर बाट नट फ्यूज लेखा हलो पैरामिटरगुलो एव रिटर्न डाउन नाउ इंटरप्रेट सो इट वज ए फिमेल रईट एज नाथिंग एज बीन मैंशन ओवर इयर फिमेले प्रथम थे मीडियल एपिकंडाइल की लिखे चले एपियार बट नट फ्यूज सो एपियार इज फाइव इयर्स एंड नट फ्यूज फोर्टीन उथ शाफ्ट मीस एब फाइव बिलो फोर्टीन मैं राफलि सो जस्ट यू से एब फाइव फर नाम एब फाइव तरह लैटरल एपिकंडाइल एपियार हो तेल बिलो टेन हो गए अब फाइव बिलो टेन आपात राफलि थार्ड पैरामिटार होता है टीप अफ अलेक्ट्रन ऑन प्रसेस एपेयर हो सो इट बिकम्स बिलो नाइन टू टुएल्व नारो नारो हो आस्ते आस्ते नीचे दिखे जा रेडियल हेड एपेयर हो सिक्स इयार्स तै तो Above six, below nine. Okay. Lateral epicondyle to appear correctly. That is it. So, above six, below ten. Can I ever say this? टीप अफ अलेक्ट्रन तो बोल नाइन टू टुएल्व तो नाइन टू टुएल्व आंतुरा देख ओपर टुएल्व आखने टुएल्व इयार्से अपेयर करते तै तो टुएल्व इयार्से अपेयर करते बाट उर सार्टन एट टेन 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 टा एक्जैक्ट व्यल्यू है सो एब सिक्स बिलो टेन हो ग आंसर लेखोटा वो फर्मेटे लेखो जो बला मुखस्त होते हैं 
ফরেনসিকের এক্সামে তো এইটুকুই মুখস্থ করতে হবে এইটুকু না অনেক কিছু আছে মুখস্থ করার বাট এটা পার্ট অফ ইট সব জয়েন্ট বেশি নেই তো এই ক্লাভিক্যাল তোমাদের দেওয়া হবে না এই এলবো জয়েন্ট একটা আছে রিস্ক জয়েন্ট একটা আছে আর কাউরি ভাগ্য খারাপ থাকলে তার পেলভিসটা করবে ঠিক আছে এই তিনটেই আছে ঠিক আছে মোস্ট প্রবাবলি উইল গেট দিস থ্রি অনলি ইন এক্সাম অলসো না 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 উই ক্যান নট ডিফারেন্সিয়েট দিস এক্স ফ্রম এক্স রেস মেনশন ওখানে যদি মেনশন করা থাকে ফিমেল লেখা থাকে এক্স রে তে দেন ইউ ক্যান সে ইট ইজ অফ এ ফিমেল ইফ দি ইনফরমেশন হ্যাজ বিন প্রোভাইডেড টু ইউ দেন ইউ নো ফ্রম দি ইনফরমেশন প্রোভাইডেড টু মি ইউ উইল সে ফ্রম দ্যাট ফ্রম দি ইনফরমেশন প্রোভাইডেড টু মি ইউ উইল আনসার লাইক দ্যাট দ্যাট ইট ইজ অফ এ ফিমেল বাট বাট নট বাই দি এক্স রে যে উই ক্যান নট এস্টিমেট দি সেক্স এজ ক্যান বি এস্টিমেটেড any fracture disease can be estimated okay hello opinion likhecho so this is this was, this is how you answer in exam also above 6 years and below 10 years radial head radial head appear koreche eto সিক্স ইয়ার্সে রেডিয়াল হেড আর ফাইভ ইয়ার্সে কোনটা ছিল ফাইভ ইয়ার্সে কী অ্যাপেয়ার করে মিডিয়াল এপি কন্ডাইল ফাইভ ইয়ার্সে মিডিয়াল এপি কন্ডাইল আর রেডিয়াল হেড হচ্ছে সিক্স ইয়ার্সে তো দুটোই অ্যাপেয়ার করে গেছে তাই তো এটা ফাইভ ইয়ার্সে হয়েছে এটা সিক্স ইয়ার্সে হয়েছে তো অ্যাভ সিক্স ইয়ার্স ফিউজ একটা হয়নি Appearance age is more important than fusion age. Appearance is more important. Okay. Means, when there is a clash, if there is a clash, means 50-50 chance that it is going to happen or it is going to happen, we will take the appearance as a means more important. It may be given to you, but in the exam, the age will be hidden okay name will be also hidden so that you cannot guess whether it is a male or a female unless and until only the uh, sex has been mentioned okay so this is of a elbow joint so now as i have showed you what what parameters you have to see and chart is over there now you have to write this down means this is a test for you it ekdom clear ache center appear korche na korche ekdom clear ache konta ওটা দ্যাট ইজ বিকজ অফ হাউ দি টেকনিশিয়ান পারফরমেন্স দি এক্স রে মানে কতটা ওই কন্ট্রা এক্সপোজার এ করা ওটা ওরা কন্ট্রোল করে সেটা সেই সময় হয়নি বাট ইট ইট ইজ ভিজিবল ইট ইজ ভেরি প্রমিনেন্ট সো অ্যাজ আই হ্যাভ টোল্ড ইউ টু ইন্টারপ্রিট নাও ট্রাই টু ইন্টারপ্রিট উইদ ইন ফিফটিন মিনিটস অ্যাট লিস্ট ইউ ক্যান ডিসকাস অ্যামং ইউর সেল হাউ টু ডু ইট বাট ডু ইট অ্যাজ ইট ইজ লাইক দি হেডিং পার্ট হোয়াট ইজ দিস দেন দি findings and finally the opinion so this then you will be uh, means what do you call you will get this age within 15 years means so parameters se khelle ho tumi dekhbe je eta 15 years e asche koro tale bujhte parbe je eta practically applicable ki na eta practical mane ekhan kari thik ache eta shanti niketan medical college hospital thik ache so you uh, you can have you take your seat you can have a seat or whatever you feel comfortable try to solve this one okay likho likho sobai ekta kore khata ache ekhane it may be given to you but in exam the age will be hidden okay name will be also hidden so that you cannot guess whether it is a male or a female unless and until only the uh, sex has been mentioned thik ache this is of a elbow joint so now as i have showed you what what parameters you have to see and chart is over there now you have to write this down means this is a test for you it ekdom clear ache center appear korche na korche ekdom clear ache kon ta numerals 
ওটা দ্যাট ইজ বিকজ অফ হাউ দি টেকনিশিয়ান পারফর্মস দি এক্স রে মানে কতটা ওই কন্ট্রা এক্সপোজার এ করা ওটা ওরা কন্ট্রোল করে সেটা সেই সময় হয়নি বাট ইট ইট ইজ ভিজিবল ইট ইজ ভেরি প্রমিনেন্ট সো অ্যাজ আই হ্যাভ টোল্ড ইউ টু ইন্টারপ্রিট নাও ট্রাই টু ইন্টারপ্রিট উইদ ইন ফিফটিন মিনিটস অ্যাট লিস্ট ইউ ক্যান ডিসকাস অ্যামং ইউর সেল হাউ টু ডু ইট বাট ডু ইট অ্যাজ ইট ইজ লাইক দি হেডিং পার্ট হোয়াট ইজ দিস দেন দি ফাইন্ডিংস অ্যান্ড ফাইনালি দি ওপিনিয়ন সো দিস দেন ইউ উইল বি মিনস হোয়াট ইউ কল ইউ উইল গেট দিস এজ উইদ ইন ফিফটিন ইয়ার্স মিনস ওই প্যারামিটার সে ফেললেও তুমি দেখবে যে এটা ফিফটিন ইয়ার্সই আসছে করো তাহলে বুঝতে পারবে যে এটা প্র্যাকটিক্যালি অ্যাপ্লিকেবল কি না এটা প্র্যাকটিক্যাল মানে এখানকারই ঠিক আছে এদের শান্তিনিকেতন মেডিক্যাল কলেজ হসপিটালে ঠিক আছে সো ইউ ইউ ক্যান হ্যাভ টেক ইউ সে ইউ ক্যান হ্যাভ সিট অর হোয়াট এভার ইউ ফিল কমফোর্টেবল ট্রাই টু সলভ দিস ওয়ান ওকে লেখো লেখো সবাই একটা করে খাতা মিডিয়াল মিডিয়াল অ্যাপিকন্ডেল দিয়ে শুরু করি মিডিয়াল অ্যাপিকন্ডেল কি হয়েছে অ্যাপিয়ার হয়েছে এটা তুমি না কোন এজ গ্রুপ নিয়েছ মেল না ফিমেল মেল रेडियल रेडियल चले ग এক্স্যাক্ট ভ্যালু পেয়েছি 12 ঠিক আছে অ্যাপিয়ার হয়ে গেছে বোঝা গেল তো এবার 7 8 এর কনফিউশন নেই 12 পাচ্ছি একদম এক্স্যাক্ট ভ্যালু এবার আমরা এই দিকটা দেখি ফিউশনে ফিউশন মিডিয়াল এপিকন্ডাল ফিউজ হয়নি তো অলমোস্ট অল বিলো 16 ঠিক আছে এই 16 উইথ শাফট বলছে তারপর এটা 11 টু 16 হচ্ছে ল্যাটারাল এপিকন্ডাল এটাও ফিউজ হয়নি তো 6 रेडियल ফিউশন 16 ইয়ার্সে হচ্ছে ওইটা দেখো একদম ফিউজ করব করব করছে কিন্তু করেনি তাহলে এজ কি হলো অ্যাবভ 12 বিলো 16 ওর এজ কত আসছে 15 15 হলো ম্যাচ করলো ব্যাপারটা হলো এই ভাবে ঠিক আছে বোঝা গেল এটার প্র্যাকটিক্যাল অ্যাপ্লিকেশন হয় আর এটা কোটে আমাদের বেশিরভাগই করতে হয় थे टेलर
আমাদের এইভাবে ন্যারো করতে হবে একটু ন্যারো দি সিক্স টু টেন ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে এইবার এক্সামিনার মাই টাস্ক ইউ ইফ ইউ আর ইফ ইউ আর এবল টু অ্যান্সার দিস আর একটু ন্যারো করার জন্য আমাদের আরো দু তিনটে প্যারামিটার আছে সেগুলো হচ্ছে ওই ক্যাপিটুলাম ট্রকলিয়া এইগুলো তো ওগুলো অতটা লাগবে না তোমাদের জন্য এইটাই ঠিক আছে এই চারটা পড়ে এটা উদ্ধার করে দিতে পারলে এক্সামে সবাই খুশি হয়ে যাবে ট্রকলিয়া দিয়ে আরও কমানো ওটা মুশকিল আছে কিন্তু হয় করা যেতে পারে কেন কি ট্রকলিয়া তারপরে ক্যাপিটুলামটা এখানে নেই এটা তো উইথ ক্যাপিটুলাম আছে এইগুলো তো আরও ন্যারো করা যায় ঠিক আছে ভ্যালিউজগুলো বাট দোস ফোর ইনাফ ফর এলবো জয়েন্ট কি কি মিডিয়াল এপিকন্ডাইল ল্যাটারাল এপিকন্ডাইল টিপা কলেকন প্রসেস রেডিয়াল হ্যাক বাস এইটুতে তোমাদের এলবো জয়েন্ট কভার হয়ে যাবে আর ওতে মোটামুটি অলমোস্ট অ্যাকিউরেট আসে অলমোস্ট ঠিক আছে কেন ল্যাটারাল এপিকন্ডাইল ল্যাটারাল এপিকন্ডাইল ল্যাটারাল এপিকন্ডাইল অ্যাপেয়ার করেছে ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে এটা টেন ইয়ার্সে এটা টেন ইয়ার্সে আর বিলো কত বললে মিডিয়াল এপিকন্ডাইল এর ফিউজন কখন হয় ফোরটিন উইথ শার্ট তাহলে ওটা হচ্ছে না ঠিক আছে তাহলে 